If you were thinking about getting the G9, this video could potentially save you $1,300, or it could convince you to spend $1,300. So let's get into it. So since my initial G9 review, people have asked me to give an update on what I think of the camera, right? So it's 2019, a lot has changed since the camera first came out. A lot has changed even since I did my initial review. So I'm just gonna go through and talk about exactly who would want to stay away from and avoid this camera, uh, but why I still think this camera is the best all around deal, maybe in all of photography and video, uh, and definitely for sure in micro four thirds. So first of all, let's start by talking about who doesn't want to get this camera, right? Um, this camera, as you know, is a micro four third sensor. And I think everybody who would want to avoid this camera would generally want to avoid micro four thirds in general, because these are problems that really stem from the smaller sensor size. It lacks dynamic range. It lacks low light performance. Um, and you know, it shoots 12 bit raw instead of 14 bit raw. And like in practical sense, right? Or in practical uses, uh, that doesn't make a lot of a difference most of the time. Like you're usually not shifting your colors around and pushing everything so much that that's really going to make a difference in your raw photos. But if you're someone who does things like astrophotography or certain types of landscape photos where you might not want to use bracketing or something and you just need a lot of dynamic range or you need really good low light performance or you are just for whatever reason the type of photographer that does really wild edits where you're pushing colors around and things the image on this camera will always start to fall apart sooner than on you know an equivalent type of full frame camera so if you're one of those types of people and it's really more for the fringe cases most people like this stuff's not going to matter that much but if you are one of those people you want to just stay away from this camera and generally micro four thirds right so when you really think about this camera though it's still a great value uh, in Micro Four Thirds, what else is it competing with? Well, the GH5, right? And you would get that camera if you needed those video features. You know, you spend an extra couple hundred bucks and you get all those advanced video features, right? Um, otherwise, though, like uh, Olympus has just announced their EM1, I think, X or something like that. And it looks like a great camera, like great weather sealing with the integrated battery grip. Because, you know, if you use the battery grip on the G9, I guess technically the weather sealing isn't as good because those gaskets are like uncovered, you know, they don't have the rubber thing on it. But honestly, for me, and I think for most people, like, that's not that big of a deal. And I don't think that new Olympus offering is really offering that much more and definitely not in the area of image quality. It's only some of the niche like computational imaging things. And those things do look cool, but I think for most people, they'd be fine just sticking with the G9 and saving a bunch of money and getting like some fast 1.2 lenses from Olympus or Panasonic. Like that would really be more useful than getting that really expensive camera body, right? Some things though have changed in terms of the camera landscape outside of Micro Four Thirds. Remember, one of the big weaknesses of this camera on launch was the continuous autofocus for video. Uh, this has improved significantly, especially with the latest firmware, but it's still not quite up to par with what Sony's offering and what Canon has with their dual pixel, right? And they just so happen to have cameras that kind of compete with the G9. So what do we think about that, right? Firstly, we have the EOS RP, which is pretty much the same price as the G9. It also has a fully articulating screen, which is great for vlogging, and it has dual pixel autofocus, which is gonna perform better than the G9. So you might think that that would be the camera to get, and for some people, maybe it is, but the big problem with the EOS RP for vlogging is that it doesn't have in-body image stabilization. So when you're just hand-holding the camera and doing stuff, you know, you're just running and gunning, just on the go, like having smooth footage is also really important. And that's something, although you have good autofocus, you're not gonna have that. And I think the autofocus in the G9 is really good enough that that 
that plus the IBIS kind of would beat out for me what I'd be getting with the EOS RP. And also when you think about the price, right? When you go to shoot 4K video, it's pretty much almost as cropped as Micro Four Thirds anyway. Um, and you don't even have 4K 60. And then on top of that, you don't have like the pro features like dual card slots. So it really is just kind of like, eh, I don't know if like that bonus in the autofocus is really worth it enough. I mean, it might be for you, it might be something to consider but eh, kind of iffy right there's also the a6400 which is awesome because Sony has finally put a screen on their cameras where you can see yourself or at least in one of the higher ish end models right uh, and that's pretty cool um, but the problem with that is that it also doesn't have IBIS right and I've shot on the a6300 a lot and it's the same sensor, so that means it's going to have the same rolling shutter. So when you're hand holding that with that rolling shutter, uh, for vlogging, I mean, I have some tests, like when I did my review of the 16mm 1.4 by Sigma, like the, it's, it's, not, it's not good with the Jello and the no IBIS, it's just not good. And then it also doesn't have things like dual card slots, but you know, that camera is a bit cheaper than the... Uh, Panasonic and uh, it has a larger sensor so that one might actually be a good consideration but if you do do things like also shoot weddings and things like that where you might need the dual card slots you know just to keep your paranoia at bay uh, then it might still be worth it to spend the extra money and get the G9 uh, and on top of that Sony's are still pretty frustrating to work with with their menu system although they're getting better with adding more touch functionality like I think that in terms of like navigating the menus with touch and like just doing certain things in terms of the user interface the Panasonic is going to be much less frustrating and that's really worth a lot when it comes to day-to-day -day shooting so although a lot has changed right really things are kind of the same the Panasonic G9, if you already have it, I'm sure you know, is a great camera and it's really holding up well. Yeah, Fuji has put out the X-T3 and that's kind of competing a little bit with the GH5 at this point because it's a similar price point. It does 4K 60, it has great autofocus, but it's still lacking the IBIS and the fully articulating screen. So it's kind of like if you still want an overall package, the Panasonic G9 or if you need those features, the GH5 are still, in my opinion, the way to go unless you need a larger sensor. All right, so I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, disagreements, things like that, leave them in the comment section below. If you have the camera, let me know how it's been treating you. If you wanna support the channel, check out my store. I have some presets in there you can get for Lightroom and Photoshop, and they also come with a free LUT. Uh, so check those out. There's exclusive videos like, you know, showing you how I made the presets and just kind of showing you some things about editing in Lightroom. Any questions or comments or disagreements, anything, leave those in the comment section below. Check out some of the other videos on the channel if you're new here if you are already subscribed turn on post notifications i appreciate you for sticking around and watching these videos follow me on instagram all those places you can reach out to me anywhere i'm always here to help you guys uh if you have any questions on like audio video photo stuff so i'll see you guys in the next video and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up <laughs>